Friend, wake up. Why do you go on sleeping? The night is over. Do you want to lose a day the same way? Other women who manage to get up early have already found an elephant or a jewel. And so much was lost already while you slept. And that was so unnecessary. The one who loves you understood, but you did not. You forgot to make a place in your bed next to you. Instead, you spent your life playing. In your 20s, you did not grow because you did not know who your Lord was. Wake up. Wake up. There's no one in your bed. He left you during the long night. Kabir says, the only woman awake is the woman who has heard the flute. The only woman awake is the woman who has heard the flute. What's up to all my poetry lovers out there? It's your boy Ian, and I'm here today to do a full book breakdown and book review on the ecstatic poems of Kabir by Robert Bly. So subscribe to the channel. Who else do you know who is doing full book breakdowns? almost you know weekly if not more a couple times a week and this video today is a part of the robert bly course which is a free course that is going to help you yes you read all of robert bly's works it's really an accountability program yes there's a little bit of writing involved and it's like a real course and i sit and talk about and break down all the books but this is going to help you because if you dive into Robert Bly's work, of course you're going to learn about poetry and get some criticism about the decline of Western civilization. But the most important thing that Robert Bly can give us and has given a ton of people is, first of all, a different outlook on nature. Hopefully, a viewpoint of nature that is very relaxed, very primal, that helps us go out into nature and create our own relationship, encourages us. It, he doesn't tell us how to do it, but that it exists and what the power and the power that it holds for each one of us. Second, Robert can help us explore the layers of our consciousness, the unconscious, the, the conscious, the, the phenomenological experience that we are living. That is what I think that this course is going to help everyone who takes it do. So if you guys would like to sign up, go to ianjamescadnack.com slash Robert dash Bly and you know, read through it. Um, there's, you know, read through some of the information. And if you want to join, just click join now for free, and then you can hop on into it. So let's start the presentation though. Today, of course, we are talking about Kabir, the Indian poet. And Kabir lived from 1408 AD to 1448. And that's that those years are contested. But from what I've read, the historical, the historians say this is probably the um, right number. He was Born in Varanasi, a very considered one of the more, most spiritual places in India. He was a basket weaver by trade, and he was a bhakti yogi. So maybe you guys don't know this if you're coming to the channel for the first time or don't explore some of my other videos, but I have a collection, growing collection of yoga philosophy books, yoga classes, meditation, meditation classes. And so I'm going to give a quick overview of the bhakti tradition in yoga because it's very important to understand his work um, kabir's work that is so at some point at one point there was all yoga was the same and it was called maha yoga you know and but eventually there was a breaking down of the vedas into hatha yoga raja yoga bhakti yoga karma yoga janya yoga you know all the different styles and you know and almost like Christianity, right? That we have, you know, Jesus or whoever, and then there's the Catholics and the Protestants, and eventually it starts breaking down the Gnostics. So now I just want to give a quick overview of what a yogi like Kabir would would have to go through in the 15th century to become a bhakti yogi. First of all, he would need to master hatha yoga. And when people hear hatha yoga today, 
they think of, I mean, Hatha, you know, there's Hatha yoga classes and that is, you know, physical postures, physical yoga, asanas. And, but 99.9% .9 of yogis today in the West just do asana, right? They just do asana flows or sequences and they call themselves yogi, yogis. But Hatha yoga is a lot bigger than that. First, uh, an, an extension of the physical postures is actually learning to do inversions like headstands or, headstands or shoulder stands for 10 plus minutes, 20 plus minutes. And because that brings um, the, the nectar, the prana back to the head, back up because, um, you know, gravity pulls energy down. So learning to do headstands and shoulder stands, for instance, can bring that energy back up. But more importantly, Hatha Yoga is about mastering the physical body in general, mastering lusts, ma mastering, you know, addictions over food or um, wealth or all these other things, mastering the gross aspects of base consciousness. You could maybe call it mastering the first three, three chakras, you know, the, um, yeah. So once you master that, and these are, these are go in order. And this back in the day, this wasn't like today, like high school today, where if you fail classes or college, they just keep moving you on, or, you know, you can get a D no, it was like you either have it or you don't have it. And you don't get to move on until you have it. They were very strict standards being upheld by these gurus. So then you move on to Raja Yoga, which is the royal yoga. And this is more of the mental aspect. So you engage, first of all, you engage in pranayama, which is breathing exercises. And once you kind of master pranayama, then you can engage in the two different types of meditation. And once again, a lot of people also meditate, right? A lot of people also are meditators. And we're going to break that down in a second. So uh, next slide. So then once you master those aspects, you know, breathing and meditating and those things, you get to then do the spiritual aspect of yoga, which is bhakti yoga. And this is really just a devotion to higher consciousness and God, living a life of devotion. And when you're living a life of devotion, spontaneity happens, ecstasy happens. And that's what Kabir is living. He is a bhakti yogi. You could, okay, well, and we'll get into some deeper analysis of yoga today and what people are doing in a second. So the two different types of meditations. First is dharana, which is chakra or visual med meditation. And I would say that less than 1% of people who meditate do this style or do it at all. And then there's dhyana, which is mindful med mindfulness meditation, right? And right now I'm actually doing a, um, on, the, on the YouTube channel, I'm doing some mindfulness meditation. I'm helping um, you guys build up from a 10 minute mindfulness meditation to a 60 minute mindfulness meditation. Also, if you sign up for the Robert Bly course, you get for free my full Lotus Mastery course where I teach you guys, in, uh, P, um, yogis of any level, people, humans of any level, how to achieve a full Lotus for 60 minutes. So if you're interested, that's another reason to sign up. So these are two different types of meditation. And there's a big lie in the meditation community that people just jump into mindfulness and meditation, Vipassana meditation, where they you know sit and just meditate, think about nothing, or just focus on the breath. When thoughts come, you draw them out. But the yogic tradition, which I feel like has the highest had the most in, highest um, percentage of enlightened people, people who achieved a sense of enlightenment. And all religions have people like this, right? People who dedicate themselves. But the yogic path, I feel like has, and I would say statistically, the most enlightened people for the numbers that they were putting in. First of all, you mastered the body, right? Then you mastered breath. And then you got into chakra or visual meditation because they say that that's what changes your consciousness. Focusing on the chakras, these ancient symbols or other ancient symbols or certain things for long periods of time for 60 minutes, 90 minutes, two hours at a time changes your consciousness as a whole because you're putting it, you're um, getting rid of all the output and you're getting new input. That's really important because they say that if you just skip that step, like a lot of people do, and you do mindfulness meditation, you will just become more of what you already are because you're not changing your, the core of your being. They say if you go into Diana, then because and that's what we see happen. That's why there's so many Silicon Valley CEOs and all these people, all these you know suspect people who are meditators because all they are doing is um, becoming more calm and be, uh, getting rid of some maybe negative negative character aspects. But they're actually just becoming more of what they already are. They're not changing the core of their being, and so now they're just a very calm or very woke. Um, brutal CEO or whatever, you know, it's kind of an interesting thing. So, and the reason that you need to learn, it goes breath or body breath, then dharana is that to master the breath, you first need, you first need to master the body and be able to sit in a lotus position and uh, mastering postures makes you breathe a lot, right? You do a lot of breathing. So when your breath is open and your nostrils are open and your, um, Nostrils are balanced, the Ida and the, I'm, I'm losing that right now, that thought, those, those, that vocab. 
you can then do chakra meditation with chakra meditation the kind of the intermediate goal is being able to do a 60 second inhale and exhale but the inhale and exhale are very slow it's almost like nothing's happening you're not going there's silent inhale silent exhale for 60 seconds and as it's going up and it doesn't feel like anything it feels like you're just breathing normally because that's because you could probably do a two minute hold inhale or exhale but going doing it for a minute is just um it feels easy so while you're doing that though, you're visualizing your chakras or certain symbols as you're moving up your body and then you go down. Um, I'm gonna be doing a lot of this on the channel in a couple months once we finish the mindfulness meditation part. And this is a huge part of yoga, this chakra and visual meditations. And this is what, um, as we see um, at the, at the, when um, some rumors about Kabir, that's Robert Bly writing about Kabir before he gets into the translations, that's what, Kabir was doing. He was very into visualizations of the sun and the mood and the different aspects of consciousness. That is, um, like I said, yogis of all types used to do this back then. But like I said, now it's been watered down to just mindfulness meditation. Because if you can't focus on something for two hours, how are you going to be able to focus on nothing? That's the other question, right? Like, because the goal is that if you can do, you know, if you can do this chakra meditation for two hours, then when you have to focus on nothing, there's going to be a lot less thoughts coming in. Like, in, like I'm sure some of you guys, if you guys have ever meditated before, you, and for me even, like the first, if I do like a 60 minute meditation, the first at least two or three minutes, even up to 10 minutes, I'm just like, there's just, I'm thinking about all this random stuff and I'm trying to throw it out. It comes and I throw it out. But yeah. It's, it's a bit of training. So let's keep moving on. So here's some things about Kabir. First of all, he was anti-renunciation. And that is a unique aspect, especially today, because a lot of yogis, a lot of people today and Buddhists, they talk about renouncing from life. That, you know, we have this romantic, we romanticize the guy living up, um, the, the monk, right? Living, someone living a monk lifestyle, someone going and living in the mountains. And I always like to say that someone who um, gives up on life, who is living the van life and not really doing things, people in general, people working jobs, you're just basically one step away from suicide. You're one step away from death. You're just breathing. The only difference between you and a dead person is you're just breathing. I guess you're consuming and driving the world economy, but you're really no different. And there's this weird thing that Westerners, because they've had a hard life, because life is hard and capitalism stuff, as soon as they, some Eastern teachings touch their consciousness, all they want to do is renounce, 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 renounce. They just want to wander and renounce. It's this weird thing that happens. And luckily, I went through that like age 16 when I first had the free, you know, really got into the, you know, Eastern philosophy and the teachings. And I got that out of my system. But everyone else, they, you know, going through this at 32 or even 24. And it's sad. And sometimes they get caught in it forever. And that's what they think yoga is about. But most yogis, much like most of the West, most of, most of the, I would say the best yogis in the, and almost all the Western cult realize that you don't, we don't want to get away from life. We want to live more of a life. We want more of life, not less of a life. So Kabir really, um, so one of his staples is involving yourself in the community. He says that you shouldn't leave your community. You shouldn't leave your family, that these are the people there. Um, there is love, that there are these things and that you should not leave your hometown or like do these things because that's where you were born. That's where you need to stay. And, you know, I know that's kind of a conservative-esque view, but he believed that you have something to give, that you were born there for a purpose. And he also talks about denying spiritual passivity, which is, like I said, so big in the, in the it's been huge in um, the history of India. As you can see, like people in India like to, um, in my yoga philosophy, I always get commenters from people in India or people telling me I can't talk about this or I don't have an opinion. And my thing, my whole message is, is that we need to reshape yoga. We need to take what works and move on from yoga because it failed. India is a mess. India has the caste system and poverty. And it was actually, if you look at it, it was actually fueled by yoga because um, the gurus and people would teach the higher ups, you know, the elite classes, yoga and how to control themselves. And that would help them, you know, keep power and live longer and do these things. And then they would, and so they had that and then they wouldn't teach poor people. And then there was this whole class of monks who you had to enter and give yourself over to the guru to learn anything. And then the 99% of the other people were left out. If you weren't a monk or elite, you weren't really given access to yoga. And that was a control mechanism. 
They figured out the greatest system when the greatest system is a personal development and didn't share it with the masses of people and tried to get them going. Just like in the West, we didn't do that either. We had a lot of teachings. We had ideas, but we um, you know, wanted to control people. And so I think that a lot of the teachings of yoga and the ideas are tainted and were created for these reasons of control. And it's in the community today that there are so many yogis out there who are you know, really smart, really talented, really clear, you know, really clear in the head and are divergent thinkers and human beings and creative, but they are spiritually passive. They don't care about world events or what's happening or how they can change. They just care about they're blissed out. It's really sad. Um, so I'm really happy that uh, Kabir takes a stance on renunciation. Then he said that religion is not a ritual, that religion should not be a ritual. That um, So here's a quote by him. Uh, Santo, and I'm going to mispronounce this, Santo Sahaj Samadhi Bali. And that translate to, translates to, O monks, O disciples, the spontaneous, spontaneous, spontaneous ecstasy is the best. So the spont- ecstasy and spontaneity, spontaneity is the highest. That he believed that all the training he had to do, all the Hatha yoga and the Raja yoga was a bunch of BS and that spontaneous ecstasy is the best. And that's like kind of like we we can kind of follow that trend into like Burning Man and like yoga festivals of today. They are kind of tapping into that bhakti energy. But, and this is interesting that I think Kabir, and this is, it's, and this is my opinion, well, and I, I feel pretty solid in this, is that people like Kabir are the odd ones out. That someone like Kabir can live this life and have ecstasy and he can also write, right? He can write these really beautiful poems and kind of have an impact. A lot of people, they bliss out and the act of blissing out and living in spontaneous, spontaneous ecstasy and spontaneity, sorry, I'm, I'm having trouble pronouncing that right now, kills their creativity, kills any motivation. And they're just like, I said, they're just blobs of, of, of joy and ecstasy, but they don't contribute because at some point, if you do yoga correctly, you start to feel into things. You start to access your emotions and higher consciousness. And as I always say on this channel, you learn that when one suffers, we all suffer. And at, when you turn up the volume on your emotions, you look at the world out there and you say, I, want, I can't change any of that. that that's not for me. I, I'm just going to focus on myself. That's what 99.9% of people are doing in the world right now who are, have opened themselves up to feel that. No, you don't, you keep turning up the volume and saying, I'm going to change this because if you can under, if you understand energy, that energy has infinite potential, that spiritual energy is infinite, then you can channel that and use that for whatever you want. You can change the world. This is possible. And it's sad when people turn off and they turn off because of trauma. And this is where I feel like a blend of um, psychoanalytical thinking and Yoga go well hand in hand that people have this these spiritual revelations, but they are so traumatized and have so much self-doubt and so much, you know, th- desire for security that they can't enact what they need to do. They can't live their true divine or life purpose. And so, you know, Kabir is really cool, but it's almost like a caveat that a lot of people who do this still to this day are very talented and very great, but they don't do anything with their life. You know, I mean, shout out to Kabir for writing. So we are now going to hop into all 44 of uh, the poems translated by Robert Bly, read them and talk about them. All right, so here we are with poem or song number one, and I'm going to blow this up on screen and then hopefully zoom it in, try to get as big as I can for you guys at home, depending if you're watching this on mobile. So number one, and just an FYI that there's something out there called the Kabir Project, and its YouTube channel has like 30 subscribers and they have Robert Bly reading all of these poems or at least most of them with a sitar behind them. So I would go check those out. I was going to um, rip those files and put them in here for the aesthetic quality, but go, but you know, that's fine. Uh, they, it seems, and they, they were talking about copyright. They, they kept mentioning copyright and all the things. So they might, I don't want this to get taken down, but you know, and why does it matter too at this point? But anyway, so here we go. Number one. When my friend is away from me, I am depressed. Nothing in the daylight delights me. Sleep at night gives no rest. Who can I tell about this? The night is dark and long. Hours go by. Because I am alone. I sit up suddenly. Fear goes through me. Kabir says, Listen, my friend. There is one thing in the world that satisfies. 
and that is a meeting with the guest. So the guest is the Purusha, and this is kind of a dual, dualistic view of consciousness in general. And this is, you know, a part of yoga that there is, of course, our mind, right? And my mind, my consciousness, your consciousness. But then there's also the Purusha, and that is God. That is the um, manifestation of energy everywhere. There's, you know, and maybe I'm not defining that perfectly for all my uh, Sanskrit scholars out there. And that's what the guest is, that it is this energy out there. It is a meeting with the divine. We could call this just the divine. But like I said, if uh, technically, I think he's, it's the Purusha, but we're just going to call it the divine. So there's one thing in the world that satisfies, and that is the divine. And this is the devotional aspect. This is what karma yoga is. So there is this other yoga called karma yoga. And it said karma yoga's philosophy says you can skip everything else. Bhakti, Raja, Hatha, you don't have to stretch. You don't have to do anything. So for all my uh, lazy guys out, lazy people out there. Um, but what you do have to do is be in 100% service to the divine, to the creational creative energy out there. And how do you do that? There's actually a great book out there called Finding Your Divine, How to Find Your Divine Purpose by Gregor Molly. If you want more information just on that in general, basically, basically the spark notes is that you're supposed to every single morning go out to a quiet place in nature, in your backyard, wherever you can find and meditate, let visions come to you. It's almost like a evolve, no, maybe not evolve, maybe a devolve, but a remix of the Native uh, Native American indigenous vision quest, the vision quest of, of all time, right? And a vision quest every morning, and then you compile those things and you work through them and determine what's the ego and not, not the ego. So anyway, so there it is. Number one, not too much to go through there. So number two, number two, here we go. I don't know what sort of a God we have been talking about. The caller calls in a loud voice to the Holy One at dusk. Why? Surely the Holy One is not death. Deaf. He hears the delicate inklets that ring on the feet of an insect as it walks. Go over, and, go over and over your beads. Paint weird designs on your forehead. Wear your hair matted, long, and ostentious. But when deep inside, but when deep inside you there is a loaded gun, how can you have God? So this is obviously a blind translation, bringing a gun. Um, Wow, this is a really good one. We're just going to leave that one as is. I'm just going to let you guys ponder on that one. Go over and over your beads. Paint weird designs on your forehead. Wear your hair matted, long, and ostentious. But when deep inside you there is a loaded gun, how can you have God? Wow. Three. Oh, friend, I love you. Think this, is over. Think this over carefully. If you are in love, then why are you asleep? If you have found him, give yourself to him. Take him. Why do you lose track of him again and again? If you are about to fall into, the, into heavy sleep anyway, why waste time smut, smoothing the bed and arranging the pillows? Kabir will tell you the truth. This is what love is like. Suppose you had to cut off your head, your head off and give it to someone else. What difference would that make? Nice. If you are in love, then why are you asleep? If you are in love with life, if you've committed yourself, oops, there I am, committed yourself to bhakti, why are you asleep? Why do you lose track of that devotional energy time and time again? If you're about to fall into a heavy sleep anyway, why waste time smoothing the bed and arranging the pillows? Why do we... <laughs> you know, and that's an interesting. Why do we why do we waste time smoothing the bed and arranging the pillows? Why not live a life of being awake? Suppose you had to cut off your head your head off and give it to someone else. What difference would that make? That's what love is. That is Kabir telling us the truth. Student, do the simple purification. You know that there is a seed inside the horse chestnut tree, and inside the seed there are blossoms of the tree, and the chestnuts and the shade. So inside the human body there is the seed, and inside the seed there is a human body again. Fire, air, earth, water, and space. If you don't want the secret one, you can't have these either. Thinkers, listen. Tell me what you know. Tell me what you know of that is not inside the soul. Take a pitcher full of water and set it down on the water. Now it has water inside and water outside. We mustn't give it a name. 
lest silly people start talking again about the body and the soul. So he's talking about the duality here. Kabir's talking about, tell me what you know that of that is not inside the soul. He's talking about this dualistic split that I was just talking about. There's this uh, concept of God versus human and duality. And we must not give it a name. The Tao that is called the Tao is not the Tao. This is the classic thing. The, the Purusha inside of us, the God inside of us, we must not give it a name. If we define it and we do it, what we have to do is channel and be one with it. And that's what the Bhakti tradition really is. Um, and that's where the ecstasy and the joy comes from. Um, this is where you see, this is um, very similar in the evangelical revival circuit that really happened in the 60s, you know, 50s and 60s in American history. This is what people are doing. They're tapping into ecstasy and the God and the I wouldn't call it Christian, Christian higher consciousness, but they were copied into something uh, much higher than themselves, at least in their point of view. And look what it gave to them. Um, look at the experiences they had from that. Oh, sorry, there was more to this. If you want the truth, I'll tell you the truth. Listen to the secret sound, the real sound, which is inside you. The one no one, ta the one, the one, no one talks of speaks the secret sound to himself. And he is the one who has made it all. So that's just reaffirming, man. Uh, listen to the secret sounds, the real sound, which is inside you. The one no one talks of speaks the secret sound to himself. Cool. Inside this clay jug, there are canyons and pine mountains. And the maker of canyons and pine mountains All seven oceans are inside. And hundreds of millions of stars. The acid that tests gold is here. And the one who judges jewels. And the music that comes from the string that no one touches. And the music that comes from the strings that no one touches. And the source of all water. If you want the truth, I'll tell you the truth. Friend, listen. The God whom I love is inside. So we just heard Robert Bly read number five and wow with the sitar and you know, the God whom I love is inside. People could just figure that out. We could cut through violence. We could cut through so many different things. And like on this channel, I've been, I'm always trying to figure out and talk about these things and like what we can do. And that's like kind of the pinnacle of the spirituality side of my website and work on, in that on, on that is like, figuring out the God inside and not, not just like, of course, you know, the external God, but just figuring out that love and that devotion. That is so important. The love, the devotion, the surrender, not and you know, Westerners have so much tension with the love, devotion, and surrender, but this isn't to a guru. This is just to the energetic force. I never surrendered. I never, I'm going to get me a five point buck and I'm going to lay on my wife tonight. I mean, there's no surrender in my heart. Go Pittsburgh Steelers. You know, you know, with this, with that attitude, even if I'm overacting that, you know, there's a lot of shades, a little bit lighter shades of that. And, you know, with that attitude, we're not going to go far. And people, you know, probably should have mentioned this in minute number one of the video, but so many people like in the West and who watch this channel, I feel like in general, part of this audience, they have this almost distaste for yoga and consciousness and the occult and spirituality and all these different things. And it's so dumb. You, people don't realize that the Western, we need these things, like I said, not to become spiritually passive, but because they are the eat that, you know, it's like another half to the puzzle. You know, I really feel like it's two parts for spirituality. Some of the stuff we learned in the West with the Western occult systems and fairy tales and myths and all that. And then the stuff from the East, if we can put those together, the classic East meets, what East meets West, anything is possible. Like we can get transcend that spiritual passivity that tends to happen with, you know, some of the Eastern stuff. And we can transcend some of that ego to it is egotism and some of that, 
t- tyrannical the tyrannical um, characters in nature that the Western style kind of breeds. So just so important, man. I, I, I can't emphasize that enough. I'm so glad that Robert Bly really, you know, brought Kabir and Murabi or whatever her name is, you know, into the mix, into his translations, into public consciousness. And because it's important, these things are so important. And I, you know, I see people talking shit, um, over on Goodreads about some of the Robert Bly's translations and how, you know, they're wrong. And I was actually, my sister texted me today and she was like, Oh, Robert Bly didn't translate. I, I, you know, she was hanging out with someone who spoke Spanish and she read him a poem. And then the, they, they, then the guy looked at the poem in Spanish and was like, this is all wrong. I'm like, you know, the, translation is a crazy thing, everybody. And one, it doesn't need to be perfect. Did you bring the essence over? And, and like I said, it's not perfect. And, you know, in retrospect and looking back, you can always do better. But, you know, I said, Robert Bly gets a lot of criti- criticism for some of his translations and over translating or under translating, but. I'm not very concerned. If I was, if I was really, really concerned about, I would learn the language. You know, that's the thing. Is like most Americans are dumb, including myself, in terms of that we don't know multiple languages and we can't access these things. So, yeah, it's just crazy that, you know, I hate when people just you know slam Robert Bly and other translators for that reason. I'm like, this doesn't need. If you don't like the style of poetry, you translate yourself. You know, or or just move on. Why should we two ever want to part? And this is number six. Just as the leaf of the water rhubarb lives on, lives floating on the water, we live as the great one and the little one. As the owl opens his eyes all night to the moon, we live as the great one and the little one and little one. This love between us goes back to the first humans. It cannot be annihilated. Here is Kabir's idea. As the river gives itself to, into the ocean, what is inside me moves inside you. Wow. Talk about, talk about a love poem. Talk about, you know, a devotional poem to, uh, you know, a, a lover, you know, just this love between us goes back to the first humans. It cannot be annihilated as a river gives itself into the ocean. What is inside me moves inside you. Wow. Really transcendent thought here, everybody. I, 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 you can't even wrap your head around how great this is sometimes seven. Why should I flail about with words when love has made the space inside me full of light? I know the diamond is wrapped in this cloth, so why should I open it all the time and look? When the pan was empty, it flew up. Now that it's full, why bother weighing it? The swan has flown to the mountain lake. Why bother with ditches and holes anymore? The Holy One lives inside you. Why open your other eyes at all? At all? Kabir will tell you the truth. Listen, brother. The guest who makes my eyes so bright has made love with me. So, you know, this is a very interesting angle. You know, this is more of like taking the angle of, you know, God as the lover. But now that it's full, why bother weighing it? When you have this love inside you, when you have the love, when you have the spiritual fulfillment and that love, this bhakti energy. And this is, and you know, when you see this with like the Jesus people, right? They have this, my Jesus, and they have this certain glow. They kind of get, get a little bit glowy sometimes with Jesus. And obviously Jesus is a part of a hierarchical system of control and tyranny and is, has, and Christianity has so much baggage, baggage behind it that if we're trying to move on into a nonviolent and evolved world or even devolved world, whatever angle we're trying to take here, it can't come along just because of everything along with it. Some of its teaching, some of its ideas, but, um, They've been integrated into public consciousness and haven't worked very well. But the Holy One, is, Kabir here isn't mentioning God or these things. The guest who makes my eyes so bright has made love with me. With me. When you have this holy love inside, why open your eyes to society and all these other things at all? Why open your eyes to anything else? When you when you're, have ascended, you don't need to go back down again. And that's a big problem. Um say this all the time. The worst thing you can do, if you're going to start the spiritual path of devotion, you can't stop. The worst disasters happen when people stop the the spiritual path. I have a friend who died because he stopped. He went pretty far on the spiritual path and renounced it all. He renounced it and, you know, got into drugs and drinking and he ended up dying in a a quote unquote accident, but really was of his own making, you know? Um, Yeah. Crazy stuff. Number eight, I laugh when I hear that the fish in the water is thirsty. You don't grasp the fact, the, the fact that what is most alive of all is inside your own house. And so you walk from one holy city to the next with a confused look, 
Kabir will tell you the truth. Go wherever you like, to Calcutta or Tibet. You can't find where your soul is hidden. For the world will never, for you, the world will never be real. And this is this kind of concept that Kabir talks about. And, and we don't have all of his poems here and, and some of his other writings. There's a difference between a house and a home. Um, Kabir doesn't like wanderers. Kabir doesn't like people leaving and like going out and, and these holy people going from one holy city to the next with a confused look. You can't find enlightenment or Tibet or these other places. If you don't know your soul, if you don't know the internal garden, the internal, the garden of desire within yourself, the world will never be real. None of that will ever matter. And, and the inside your own house is of of course, a metaphor to consciousness, but it isn't because he really believed in the familial dynamic and that you can turn your house into a home and all houses need to be homes. Nine. Knowing nothing shuts the iron gates, the new love opens them. The sound of the gates opening wakes the beautiful woman asleep. Kabir says, fantastic. Don't let a chance like this go by. And, you know, that's a lot. You know, I, I've heard that. That's kind of, if you guys go back to the um, grail, uh, my book review on he, the psychology of Matt, or the, I don't know, Matt, the, Masculine Psychology by Robert A. Johnson. I'm forgetting the psycho. I'm forgetting it. Uh, forgetting the title. We talked about how the the Grail Castle opens for all men and all humans, really in general, a couple times in their life. Even the lowest of the low, it presents itself. There are these opportunities, and a lot of people don't know or don't take these opportunities. They aren't keen to what is happening. So don't like don't let a chance like that go by. All right. Sorry, everybody. Had to turn on the light here. It's getting too dark. 10. Between the conscious and the unconscious, the mind has put up a swing. All earth creatures, even the supernovas, sway between these two trees. It never winds down. Angels, animals, humans, insects by the million, also the wheeling sun and moon. Ages go by and it goes on. Everything is swinging. Heaven, earth, water, fire and the secret one slowly growing a body kabir saw that for 15 seconds and it made him a servant for life that's you know it's really once again if you see consciousness wow look at this photo if you see consciousness if you tap into these things all you need to do is feel this for you know like kabir said for 15 seconds to understand god the purusha these things and you will become a servant to it. You will understand. But it, and that's why it's so important that we create non-hierarchical systems because people can tap into this with Christianity or Hinduism or um, Islam. And then they are a part of this tyrannical system of control and hierarchy and heaven and hell and dialects and polarities and all these things. It's not healthy. It's not, like I said, you, it's for you and your family and the value system and what you're trying to create. Maybe it's good today, but you're putting a bandaid on the wound of humans inability and to, or our love for the simulacra and for stories and narratives. We need to transcend that these religious rituals. So I, you know, I know there's some Christians in the audience right now. And, you know, of course other religions too, but it's, I mean, it's honestly just not, like I said, you're, it's like some problem with the government, like a government, like, you know, the U S government or something tries to make a problem, you know, we, um, for a couple, go away for a couple of years, but then it's going to bite us in the ass 30 years down the road. That's what this is. That's what maintaining, you know, some of these religious um, ties does to us. 12, 11. My inside, listen to me. The greatest spirit, the teacher is near. Wake up, wake up, run to his feet. He is standing close to your head right now. You've slept for millions and millions of years. Why not wake up this morning? Once again, this is the same thing. The teacher is near. This energy is always around us. Why not wake up now? Why not give yourself over to the bhakti and the devotional path? This is key to life, everybody. I mean, I, I can't overemphasize this enough here. I mean, let's let Kabir do it. 12. There is no flag no one sees blowing in the sky temple. The blue cloth, cloth has been stretched up, is decorated with the moon and many jewels, the sun and moon can be seen in that place. 
When looking at that, bring your mind down to silence. I will tell you the truth. The man who is drunk from that liquid wanders around like someone insane. Wow. Okay, 13. There's a moon in my body, but I can't see it. A moon in the sun. A drum never touched my hands, beating, and I can't hear it. As long as a human being worries about when he will die and what he has this, that is his, all of his works are zero. When affection for the eye creature and what it owns is dead, then the work of the teacher is over. The purpose of labor is, labor is to learn. When you know it, the labor is over. The apple blossom exists to create fruit. When that comes, the petals fall. The musk is inside the deer, but the deer does not look for it. It wanders around looking for grass. The human beings, like when we become overconscious, we enter the state of analysis paralysis, when we're worrying about death or morality, all these different things, we aren't connected into this phenomenological moment. And that is an important thing for us to be doing, you know, obviously. And that's Kabir, that's in Kabir now makes metaphors in this one. And these are really nice. I mean, honestly, you know, I'm not breaking down these poems very deeply because they're very simple. It's very nice. But like I said, for the Western consciousness, we don't, we maybe understand this, like I said, through like Christianity and like the revival circuit and that, you know, born again Christianity. But this is something so much higher. This is, can be achieved all through the ecstasy of dance and bhakti in general, but it, like I said, it also can be achieved through like this systematic meditation, pranayama, and all these other techniques. And you can access these mystical states that unless you're a reclusive, very talented Christian who is like doing a weird, I don't know. I, I don't think it's possible to hit these states most of the time for like the normal everyday, everyday consciousness. <clears throat> 14. I said to the wanting creature inside me, where is this river you want to cross? There are no travelers on the river road and no road. Do you see anyone moving about on that bank or resting? There's no river at all and no boat and no boatman. There's no tow rope either and no one to pull it. There's no ground, no sky, no time, no bank, no ford. And there is no body and no mind. Do you believe there's some place that will make the soul less thirsty? In that great absence, you will find nothing. Be strong then and enter into your own body. There you have a solid place for your feet. Think about it carefully. Don't go off somewhere else. Kabir says this, just throw away all thoughts of imaginary things and stand firm in that which you are. Once again, we hit this um, same theme of it's already inside you. It's already here. The kingdom of heaven is within, but that is maybe mistranslated sometimes. Sometimes it's the, you know, anyway, that's a whole different story, but you know, it is within us, man. Okay, now we're going to be talking about the bhakti path. This will be fun. 15. My body, my body and mind are in depression because you are not with me. How much I love you and want you in my house. When I hear people describe me as your bride, I look sideways ashamed. Because I know that far inside us we have never met. Then what is this love of mine? I don't really care about food. I don't really care about sleep. I'm restless indoors and outdoors. The bride wants her lover as much as a thirsty man wants water. And how will I find someone who will take a message to the guest from me? How restless Kabir is all the time. How much he wants to see the guest. Wow. I mean, that is, but I don't care much about food. I don't care much about sleep. All I care about is this devotion to this higher consciousness, to this higher energy. Let's go, everybody, man. If you are still here, leave a comment down below about what you're thinking about this, man. If you are working your way through this with me right now, what are you thinking about all this? This is great stuff. This is really catching the moment. This is really, it is very hard to catch bhakti. It's really hard to like, kind of like, kind of, if anyone's done psychedelics, I really describe or write down or capture the experience. Kabir here, Kabir, Kabir, Kabir here, 500 years ago is 600 years ago is capturing the experience very well. If I might, if I say it so the flute of interior time. Oh, sorry. 16. The flute of interior time is played, whether we hear it or not. What we mean by love is it sound coming in. When love hits the father's edge of excess, it reaches a wisdom and the fragrance of, and the fragrance of that knowledge. It penetrates our thick bodies. It goes through walls its network of notes has a structure as if a million suns were arranged inside. This tune has truth in it. Where else have you heard a sound like this? 
When love hits the farthest edge of excess, it reaches a wisdom. When you give yourself over to pure devotion, even in a relationship, when you go all the way, and when you're in pure devotion to really anything in life, that's where the wisdom comes in. Do not stand in the middle of the road. Wisdom is not found. Life and poetry and these things are not found in the middle centrist path. You have to take risks. You have to be bold. You have to go to the unknown places. That's what you are looking for. All right. What comes out of the mu- the harp? Music. And if there is a dance, no hand. And there is a dance, no hands or feet dance. No fingers play it. No ears hear it. Because the holy one is the ear, and the one listening too. The great doors remain closed, but the spring fragrance comes inside anyway. And no one sees what takes place there. Men and women who have entered through both doors at once will understand this poem. And this once again is talking about that. Life, music, love, spring, you know, the feeling of spring, a nice April day. It is within us. I was I reading something about, was I reading that in Kabir? I don't know where I was reading that today. About George Sati Ayana, the philosopher, and he was giving his last lecture ever at Harvard. He came across an inheritance or something, so he was giving up his post. And in the middle of his last lecture, he looked outside and saw a beautiful bird, and he just walked up. He just walked away. He just said, uh, "April is waiting," and then he left. And that was his career right there. And once you understand, you know, even the external world, but the internal world, <coughs> there is music. There is life within it. I talk to my inner lover and I say, why such rush? We sense that there is some sort of spirit that loves birds and animals and the ants. Perhaps the same one who gave a radiance to you in your mother's womb. Is it logical you would be walking around entirely orphaned now? The truth is that you turned yourself away yourself and decided to go into the dark alone. Now you are tangled up in others and have forgotten what you once knew. And that's why everything you do has some weird failure in it. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, once you... Get, and once you get off this path and you're worried about society and others, that's what happens. And there's weird failure in everything that you do. 19. Friend, hope for the guest while you are alive. Jump into experience while you are alive. Think and think while you are alive. What you call salvation belongs to the time before death. If you don't break your ropes while you are alive, do you think ghosts will do it after? The idea that the soul will join with the ecstatic just because the body is rotten, that is all fantasy. What is found now is found then. If you find nothing now, you will simply end up with an apartment in the city of death. If you make love with the divine now, in the next life you will have the face of satisfied desire. So plunge into truth. Find out who the teacher is. Believe in the great sound. Look at this. is This is absolute fire, everybody. That... So many people, this is the whole Christian, uh, heaven is here, heaven is here. Don't, don't worry, the, the, if the king is wrong, you know, turn, turn, turn your cheek. Absolutely not. Life is here. It is lived. This is heaven. This is the, meta, you know, this afterworld, our body rotting, uh, getting this experience. If we don't make our consciousness that now, it's never maybe going to get there. We have one opportunity with language and you listening to me right now to do this. Are you going to do it? Or are you going to sit down and live a life asleep? So many people are sleeping. So many people f- freaking know this. I have so many friends who know all the stuff I'm saying right now and they are closing their eyes. Oh, I got kids. Oh, I got to pay the bills. Screw that. I don't know who they are or who they th- what they think they're doing, but it's absolutely sad. It's absolutely sad the state of human beings and what they think that they, I mean, what an ego to think that you don't have to do this, that you don't have to attain this. If you have that experience that it will just happen for you, that you don't have to put the work in or even it's not even work, just channel into this and accept what that means. Because people do you, people channel into us and they realize they need to change their whole life. Like we talked about with Rilke, you must change your life with a lot of these teachings. This is not static poetry. This is not static art. This is stuff that makes you, Wake up. That is what our life needs to be of movement, flow, growth. I'm absolutely, I get absolutely pissed off at people and what they, these dumb lives, man. And here's the end. Kabir says this, when the guest is being searched for, it is the intensity of the longing for the guest that does all of the work. Look at me and you will see a slave of that intensity. 
It is the intensity of the longing. There is a sense of longing. We don't have longing anymore. All I have to do right now is, you know, if uh, I'm not single, but if I was just hop on Tinder and then, you know, find a girl to get with tonight or find a new girlfriend, go to the local bar. There is no sense of longing. I don't have a girl, you know, who I've am told I'm going to marry or I really like, but she lives, you know, a day's ride away and we're just thinking about each other and we maybe get to send a letter every once. So there's no longing in love. There's no longing for food. There's no longing for anything. There's no longing for God anymore because through um, like through the proliferation of things like porn and drugs and AI, we can feel like a God. We can have this. We can live in the reality of the virtual and it's, it's crazy <laughs> as Zizek would say. All right. Okay, 20. I know the sound of the ecstatic flute, but I don't know whose flute it is. A lamp burns and has neither wick or nor oil. Let's blow this back up. Sorry, I have to show my face when I'm, when I'm having a moment. When one flower opens, ordinarily, ordinarily dozens open. The moon's bird, the moon, the moon bird's head is filled with nothing but the thoughts of the moon. And when the next rain will come is all that the rain bird thinks of. Who is it we spend our entire life loving? Exactly. And I think it's mostly wasted. 21. What has death in a thick body? What has death and a thick body dances before? What has no thick body and no death? The trumpet says, I am you. The spiritual master arrives and bows down to the beginning student. Try to live to see this. I am you. That's what it is. I am you. We, I am you. You are me. We are each other, man. The, there is no difference between the highest enlightened being and you. There is no separation. 22. I've been thinking of the difference between water and the waves on it. Rising water, still water. Falling back, it is water. Will you give me a hint of how to tell them apart? Because someone has made up the word wave. Do I have to distinguish it, distinguish it from water? There is a secret one inside of us. The planets in all of the galaxies pass through his hands like beads. There is a string of beads one should look at with luminous eyes. Wow. Very nice. 23. The bhakti path winds in a delicate way. On this path, there is no asking and no not asking. The eagle simply disappears the moment you touch him. The joy of looking for him is so immense that you just dive in and coast around like a fish in the water. If anyone needs a kiss, the lover leaps up to offer his. Kabir's poem touch on the secrets of this bhakti. This spontaneity, that's what Kabir's trying to get at with his poems. There's this spontaneity to it. That there is, once you touch, once you reach out and you touch and you search, you are immersed. This is like nothing else. When you search for higher, non-hierarchical higher consciousness... You are immersed in a journey and in a love and in an energy that is like nothing else. Nothing else is like it. You, I mean, I think maybe an experience with nature, you know, longing and living in nature has some, a comparable effect, but nothing else. You're not going to get this from sex, even from relationships. You're not going to get this anywhere else except on this bhaktic path. It's pretty cool. Let's leave for the country where the guest lives. There is a water jar filling with water, even though there's no rope to lower it. The skies are always blue, and yet rain falls on the earth. Do you have a body? Don't sit on the porch. Go out and walk in the rain. The fall moon rides the sky all month there. And it would sound silly to mention only one sun. The light there comes from a number of them. Very nice. 25. Are you looking for me? I am in the next seat. My shoulder is against yours. You will not find me in stupas, not in Indian shrine rooms, nor in synagogues, nor in cathedrals. Not in masses, nor curtains, not in legs winding around your own neck, nor in eating nothing but vegetables. When you really look for me, you will see me instantly. You will find me in the tiniest house of time. Kabir says, student, tell me, what is God? He's the breath inside the breath. Wow, this is amazing, everybody. Like, this is absolutely an amazing poem. Um, so he's not going to be in shrines or synagogues. He's not going to be at curtains, which is like um, the mass, like when the music, music, musical events, Indian musical events. He's not going to be having sex with you and he's just going to be eating vegetables. And this could be an analogy to God. This is, you know, um, this could be an analogy to Kabir or to God, you know, because it's a similar path. 
is the breath inside the breath. As we load, here we go. 26. The darkest darkness of night is coming along fast, and the shadows of love close in the body and the mind. Open the window to the west and disappear into the air inside you. Near your breastbone, there is an open flower. Drink the honey that is all around that flower. Waves are coming in. There's so much magnificence near the ocean. Listen, sounds of big seashells, sounds of bells. Kabir says, friend, listen, this is what I have to say. The guest I love is inside me. All right. Very nice. You know? A lot of these are kind of the same. So, you know, if some are the same. I'm just going to kind of be breezing through them. I'm just reading them with you guys. Because a lot of people don't have this book. That's the other reason I'm doing this is that, you know, this is free online on archive.org. And here we go. It is time to put up a love swing. Tie the body and then tie the minds so that they swing between the arms of the secret one you love. Bring the water that falls from the clouds to your eyes and cover yourself inside entirely with the shadow of night. Bring your face up close to his ear. And then talk only about what you want deeply to happen. Kabir says, listen to me, brother. Bring the shape, face, and odor of the Holy One inside you. This, you know, this, like I said, the devotional aspect, when you look at it, there really is no separation between when you become a vessel of the divine and the divine and your actions and your words and your life. It all starts reflecting that. 28. There's nothing but water in the holy pools. I know. I've been swimming in them. All the gods sculpted of wood or ivory can't say a word. I know. I've been crying out to them. The sacred books of the East are nothing but words. I looked through their covers one day sideways. What Kabir talks of is only what he has lived through. If you have not lived through something, it is not true. Very nice. That is a very, you know, anti-intellectual stance. But, you know, that is very kind of the sign of the times back then. So now we're moving on to the only woman awake is the woman who has heard the flute. 29. Clouds grow heavy. Thunder goes. Rain drives in from the east. Its patter falls on the sides of houses. Rain can be destructive, wiping out boundary marks. But the soil needs care. Ecstatic love has sprouts now and renunciation. Let the rain feed both. Only the farmer with intelligence actually brings his far harvest back from to his farmyard. He will fill the granary bins and feed both the wise men and saints. And this is an analogy to not. Okay. Yeah. We'll, we'll hear more of this friend. Wake up. Why do you go on sleeping? The night is over. Do you want to lose the day the same way? Other women who managed to get up early have already found an elephant or a jewel. So much was lost already while you slept. And that was so unnecessary. The one who loves you understood, but you did not. You forgot to make a place in your bed next to you. Instead, you spent your life playing. In your 20s, you did not grow because you did not know who your Lord was. Wake up! Wake up! There's no one in your bed. He left you during the long night. So, so much was lost while you already slept. We are sleeping. There's decades of our life where we do are go, we're going on and we haven't dedicated ourselves to this path, to higher consciousness, to this energy. And as we're moving on, it's all just time wasted. Literally, it's all just time wasted. Kabir says, the only woman awake is the woman who has heard the flute. You know, the only person awake is the person that has tapped into that. I played for 10 years with the girls my own age, but now I am suddenly in fear. Sorry, let me blow this up. I'm on the way up some stairs. They are high. Yeah, I have to give up my fears if I want to take this part in this love. If I want to take part in this love, I have to let go of the protective clothes and meet him with the whole length of my body. My eyes will have to be the love candle this time. Kabir says, men and women in love will understand this poem. If you... If what you feel for the Holy One is not desire, then what's the use of dressing with such care and spending so much time making your eyelids dark? This is just attacking, you know, you know, the dress, the rituals of, you know, probably Hinduism and Islam. 32. I married my Lord and meant to live with him, but I did not live with him. I turned away and all at once my 20s were gone. 
The night I was married, all my friends sang for me, and the rice of pleasure and the rice of pain fell on me. Yet when all those ceremonies were over, I left. I did not go home with them. And my relatives all the way home said, it's all right. Kabir says, now my love energy is actually mine. This time I will take it with me when I go. And outside his house, I will blow, blow the horn of triumph. The love inside of you, the love, this channel, the beacon, the energy, the satellite to higher consciousness, these things are different than like what's being imposed upon us by religion and society. And that's what, you know, that's an analogy that Kabir is making here. The small ruby everyone wants has fallen out on the road. Some think, it, some, think, some think it is east of us, others west of us. Some say among primitive earthwalks, others say in the deep waters. Kabir's instinct told him it was inside and what it was worth, and he wrapped it up carefully in his heart cloth. So, you know, some people say, you know, it's in crystal, it's crystals. We, crystals have God in this energy in it, or it's in the deep waters of baptism or of um, in, in Varanasi. You know, it's somewhere in the water. No, it's inside. You know, Kabir's just telling this, uh, this us again. 34. Swan, I'd like you to tell me your whole story. Where you first appeared and what dark sand you are going toward. And where you sleep at night and what you are looking for. It's morning, Swan. Wake up. Climb in the air. Follow me. I know of a country that spiritual flatness does not control. Nor constant depression. And those who are alive are not afraid to die. Their wildflowers come up through the leafy floor. And the fragrance of I am he floats on the wind. There the bee of the heart stays deep inside the flower and cares for no other thing. Very nice. It's a bhakti devotion. Listen, friend, this, boss, this body is his dulcimer, dulcimer. I don't know what that means. He draws the strings tight and out of it comes the music of the inner universe. If the string breaks and the bridge falls, then this dulcimer of dust goes back, of dust goes back to dust. Kabir says... The Holy One is the only one who can draw music from it. Thirty-six. Don't go outside your house to see flowers. My friend, don't bother with that excursion. Inside your body there are flowers. One flower has a thousand petals. That will, that will do for a place to sit. Sitting there you will have a glimpse of beauty inside the body and out of it, before gardens and after gardens. Yeah, gardens come and go, life, these things come and go, but the beauty within us is there. So many people, this has been a huge thing in our society now. There's so much external stuff, so much focus on the external. There's wars, there's this, there's, um, like in poetry, like confessional poetry and political poetry, there's all these things, but there is no internal dialogue. If you looked at Robert Bly's political poetry, it had these very internal archetypal natures to it, and you move through it with language and with metaphor. And that's how, if you're going to do the external, there has to be an internal aspect to it too. We're living in a world, though, where people don't understand this internal aspect. That's a cool photo. Wow. 37. The spiritual athlete often changes the color of his clothes. The spiritual athlete. That's so funny. And his mind remains gray and loveless. He sits inside a shrine room all day so that the guest has to go outdoors and praise the rocks. Or he drills holes in his ears. His beard grows enormous and matted. People mistake him for a goat. He goes out into wilderness areas, strangles in his impulses, and makes himself neither male or female. He shaved his... He shaved his skull, puts his robe in an orange vat, reads the, the Gita, and becomes a terrific talker. Kabir says, actually, you're going, to, you're going in a hearse to the country of death, bound hand and foot. And this is just a straight-on attack to all the people. And this is today. All the people who dress certain ways and act certain ways, and they wear robes, and people get gauges in their ears, they grow out their beards, they try to act a certain way. This is... Spiritual narcissism. This is people trying to deflect and not actually connect, not trying to tap into this higher consciousness. They are finding they are using external things to signify that they are doing this as signifiers. But really, on the in, on on the inside, they aren't really doing the work. And this may be a defense defense mechanism against doing the work. Friend, please tell me what I can do about this world. I hold to and keep spinning out. I gave up sewing clothes and wore a robe. But I noticed one day the cloth was well woven. So I bought some burlap, but I still throw it elegantly over my left shoulder. I pulled back my sexual longings, and now I discover that I'm angry a lot. 
I gave up rage, and now that now I notice that I am greedy all day. I worked hard at dissolving the greed, and now I am proud of myself. When the mind wants to break its link with the world, it still holds on to one thing. Kabir says, listen, my friend, there are very few that find this path. So this is the same thing. When you give up, when you do these things, um, when you renounce, it gets worse. When you renounce, when you, I know so many people and they renounce and then things get worse. Their problems don't go away because you need to go more into life. When you, It's not like you were born out in the wilderness. You have problems. You are conscious. You know language. You are literate. When you are here and you try to move back in life, it, things go bad. These longings, these things, you can't shift the energy like this. The only way is through individuation and completeness, wholeness, connection to the divine. So we are going to bring on now, everybody, a special guest, um, A1 Moon. All right. So it's time for some more Kabir talk. We brought in the guest to talk about the guest. Um, <laughs> and so. <laughs> all right. Here we go. Let's, ah, I'm done. I'm delirious. At last, the notes of his flute come in and I cannot stop from dancing around on the floor. The blossoms open even though it is not May and the bee knows of it already. The air over the ocean is troubled. There's a flash. Heavy seas rise in my chest. Rain pours down outside and inside I long for the guest. Something inside me has reached to the place where the world is breathing. The flags we cannot see are flying there. Kabir says my desire body is dying and it lives. So you long for the guest. Always longing for the guest. Or should be. I feel like that's nice. Longing doesn't really do too much harm. Um, how hard is it is to meet the guest? The rain bird is thirsty. She cries and whistles. Where is the rain? But she refuses all water but the rain. The deer comes out of her kind thickets when she hears music. She does, she loves music, and somehow knows she will die. The widow sits alone by her husband's body. Soon the fire will be around her, and she is not afraid. Don't have fears about his unimaginative body. Very nice. So, if you guys don't know, um, in India, back in the day, when a husband would die, they would burn the widow along with her out at, at the pyre or whatever. I, if, I think that's what they would call it out there. Um, so, yeah, out there on the, in Varanasi, where he's from, that's like a tradition. And still today, in modern times, there's like, obviously, that's not like... I don't even know if it's uh, quote unquote allowed, but sometimes like very traditional people, they'll run up at the last second, like wives and let themselves burn with the husbands. What do you think of that old cultural practice in general, Summer? I mean, I guess he's making fun of them devoting themselves to their like the bodies that don't last. Right. Yeah, I also think he might be approving it though, because don't have any fears about this. This un unimaginative body, it that doesn't matter. Don't have any fears about getting burned alive, you know. Because probably, if we're just being honest, if we look at Kabir. He's probably, you know, everyone and probably a slightly misogynist. I don't want to say that, but you know, men, men in 1400, man in 1400, probably. I mean, like I said, I don't know if he's disapproving here. Who knows? And there they are. Here's here's us right here. Ready? There we are. <laughs> On the way to the burning ceremony. <laughs> okay. 42. 42. Have you heard the music that no fingers enter into? Far inside the house, entangled music. What is the sense of leaving your house? Suppose you scrub your ethical skin until it shines, but inside there is no music. Then what? Muhammad's son pours over words and points out this and that, but if his chest is not soaked dark with love, then what? The yogi comes along in his famous orange, but if inside he is colorless, then what? Doesn't it say Kabir says? Kabir says, Every instant that the sun is risen, if I stand in the temple or on a balcony, in the hot fields or in a walled garden, my own Lord is making love with me. You're always feeling good. 
Yeah, and he's making a commentary here on like the pseudos, the pseudo spiritual people that you know I'm always making fun of of today. You know that uh, if we come up here, the yogi comes along in his famous orange, the orange of the yogi. Even Osho and those people still wear. It. But inside, if he is colorless, then what? You know, if Muhammad, son of a, a, a Muslim, is pouring over the words of the Quran, but he is not his chest is not soaked with dark with love, then what? What is the purpose? What are all these people? They are almost these pseudo pseudos out pseudo spiritual people out there they almost have no purpose they're not even pseudo spiritual people i think he's also saying like even in your mundane life just like doing the dishes if you feel nothing then what i mean if you are constantly looking to your life to bring you meaning all the time and you know you're always dissatisfied because you know we're not living in Hawaii in the nice house and so what is the what is this it doesn't none of it matters I mean you know not even it's not even about being spiritual I think it's about just like what are you making of your life yeah and yeah it's the abundance is always within mm -hmm. it's always there it's inside the love of, of, is inside. it reminds me of the book of the movie um, of that like Disney rendition of i think it was it might have been joseph king of dreams but when um he prophesies his the prophecy or like the vision from god is you know this egyptian pharaoh needs to do this this and this for egypt's people or god will come in and kill all the children and the the pharaoh's like mm, no i don't i don't believe you um go away and then all the kids die um and the scene is like this like red dust that comes and sweeps through these houses and it's like it's like this in between it was it's really interesting yeah that, that's joseph king of dreams yeah that's what it reminds me of the guest is inside you and also inside me you know the sprout is hidden inside the seed we are all struggling none of us has gone far let your arrogance go and look around inside, like I just said. Anyway, the blue sky opens out farther and farther. The daily sense of failure goes away. The damage I have done to myself fades. A million suns come forward with light when I sit firmly in that world. So, oh. I hear bells ringing that no one has shaken. Inside love, there is more joy than we know of. Rain pours down, although the sky is clear of clouds. There are whole rivers of light. The universe is shot. Th the universe is shot through in all parts by a single sort of love. How hard it is to feel that joy in all four bodies, in all our four bodies. Those who hope to be reasonable about it fail. The arrogance of reason has separated us from that love. With the word reason, you already feel miles away. How lucky Kabir is that, surrounded by all this joy, he sings inside his own little boat. His poems amount to one soul meeting another. These songs are about forgetting, die, forgetting dying and loss. They rise above both coming in and going out. So when we're looking here, this is up here. If we're looking the with the word reason, you already feel miles away. And this is a dig on Descartes and the whole logical movement, that reason, you know, for, and if we, I hear bells ringing that no one has shaking inside love. There's more joy than we know of, you know, he's talking about here is it's, out there but with reason with all these other things with these societal projections that we're putting on and all these different types of focus we're never going to be able to find that but how lucky is kabir to be surrounded by all this joy he sings inside his own little boat his poems mount to one soul meeting another man you know because when you access higher consciousness in these things you transcend dying and loss and all these other things it's this bhakti path man it's, it's you know very intense all right, 44, everybody. This is the end. Let's. And do you have any thoughts about the last poem? Um, well, like I said, if you're, you know, going to, you know, decide to do, to have, you know, um, a life that isn't necessarily fulfilling, you have to wonder what is fulfillment for yourself. And I think that this is nice for you to use as a way to figure out what that is to you, because technically it is just hidden everywhere all the time. Um, yeah. Okay. 
44. The woman who is separated from her lover spins at the spinning wheel. The Baghdad body of the body rises with its towers and gates. Inside it, the palace of intelligence has been built. The wheel of ecstatic love turns around in the sky, and the spinning seat is made of the sapphires of work and study. This woman weaves threads that are subtle, and the intensity of her praise makes them fine. Kabir says, I am that woman. I am weaving the linen of night and day. When my lover comes and I feel his feet, the gift I will have for him is tears. When you wake up from your weird sleep that your life sucks because you don't do anything to make your, yourself feel beautiful, it doesn't even mean physical things. It just means like a perspective shift. All the lover will do is let you cry. Isn't that nice? Yeah. Yeah, I agree. What a good way to end, everybody. So here it is. Once again, sign up at ianjamescadnack.com slash robert dash if you guys want to sign up for the course. Subscribe to the channel. We are here. We are live. We will be back again with more Robert Bly Breakdowns daily videos. And I will see you guys. We will see you guys later. Peace.